Hey there everybody, it's uh, Wednesday morning, it's going to be a really nice day today, it's still going to be very hot, we got a three bay garage, got three drains in here, about 56 by 32, so we're going to, first truck's mixing up, I got three ten and a halfs coming, it's about six inches thick, figures right around 31, 32 yards, so we may need uh, three trucks and then a balance truck, but we're going to get going, he's mixing up, that's Brian up there. Brian usually gets the slump pretty close. You can see he's up there looking at it on the first try. So that's what we like about the way Brian mixes up. Radiant heat in the floor, two inches of styrofoam. It's gonna be a pretty nice garage when they get done with this. Hey guys thanks for tuning in so it figures right after i tell you brian usually gets it right on the first time that we had to have him give it a drink on this one but he does usually get it right it just so happens on this one we had to have him give it a drink twice to get it up to where we wanted now take a note of the water on top of the styrofoam first of all the styrofoam is there for the radiant heat you know to help make the heat go up into the garage and not down into the sub base so they put styrofoam down for radiant heat but usually when it rains the night before you can see the water on top of the styrofoam the water just sits there in little puddles and i'll show you a little bit later how that plays a factor into us pouring this floor uh, we do try to we do try to move some of it if we can but it gets kind of hard moving it around with that radiant heat there that's just stapled down those staples don't hold that great so you got to be a little bit careful with them when you're pouring now we got a six inch floor we're pouring today. The garage is 50 by 30. And those boxes, those square things you see in there, those are, those are floor drains. So each bay pitches to its own drain. So there's really, the only flat part in this floor is the part you can't see on the video right now. We'll show that a little bit later. That's where we're gonna finish up. But everything we're pouring right now slopes towards those drains. And there's actually gonna be a, like a high point right in the in the between them right where I'm standing right now I'm gonna shoot a pad with the laser and I'm making that pad about an inch higher than the drains and it's also the same level as the outside of the concrete floor so everything slopes towards the drains that way hopefully when you know he, he drives his cars or his trucks in there everything the water kind of just all goes into the drain <laughs> and not towards the back corner those are bigger than normal drains for a garage floor to a residential garage. It's just something special the homeowner wanted. He put them all in there. Uh, they did all the prep work here. We just basically we show up, we shoot our grades, we put our form boards on the garage doors, and we're ready to go. The spec, the spec called for six inches of concrete, 3,500 psi with fiber mesh. So that's why you don't see any wire or rebar in here just called for fiber mesh and we'll saw cut contraction joints we get done power trial on this today we're gonna to power trial it nice and smooth and then we saw cut it the same day we don't typically we don't typically have any trouble with cracks if we saw cut the same day you could I suppose you could get a crack if it's settled for whatever reason if they didn't put the sub base in and compact and six inch lifts you know, if somebody just pounds it in and just compacts the top, you could probably get some settlement out of this. But for the most part, this this works pretty good this way. Now, what Luke's going doing now is he's he's striking the slope into the concrete using that wet pad I made, and then we're going to use the 14 foot screed right there, and we'll screed we'll screed the slope and the concrete right at the same time. Darren's on the left in the white t-shirt Eric's on the right in the kind of the green shirt and that screed is sloping towards that floor drain 
as they're screening. You know, you can't tell. So the concrete, I mean, we got we got water reducer in the concrete, so we can we can pour a pretty nice slump here. You know, we don't want to pour it too too loose. We want to make sure it maintains its slope. But we know we can still pour it at a pretty pretty workable slump and not have to worry about not have to worry about the concrete pitching towards the drains because it's, it's just something that we do a lot of. Well, that's the first truck. The first truck went quite a ways. Second truck's backing in. I, I suppose we could have used the conveyor on this one, but it's not too much work just hooking that eight foot chute on and pour it at the right slump. It, it flows out of there pretty good as you see. Now take, take note of this hole right here you see with the rebar going across it. This is going to be a chimney for a chimney pad and a lot of guys a lot of guys will put the footing in for that first when they do the foundation and then a lot of them just want to pour it right into the floor like we're doing today but take note of that and how deep it is and where it is and I'll tell you a little bit why here coming up soon. So that water, that water that's already on the styrofoam, you know, we try to work it out as we're pouring. We don't try to trap it in the concrete. And for the most part, as long as you, as long as you work your way from one side to the other, you know, you can work most of that water out, or it'll get down into the seams of the styrofoam, and you know, hopefully, hopefully, get soaked into the dirt. But a little bit of it does remain, and sometimes it'll start kind of bleeding up through the concrete. And you'll see here in a little bit when I go to bow float what I mean by that. Now it's a little bit low in the middle. I, I didn't have enough to shoot my pad an inch higher than the drain, so I've got to get a little bit more concrete up in there. We consider, you know, for the four of us here, Eric's actually the guy in the greens worked for us for, I don't know, 25 years. He did work full time at one point. Uh, now he's a school teacher and he coaches varsity baseball. So he comes and helps us in the summers. So it's basically just like having a, a you know a regular concrete guy there in the summer for about 10 weeks. Yeah, that thing was pretty deep. I don't know how deep, it was probably two feet deep right there. And Sometimes, sometimes what Darren's doing, Darren's kind of standing on the styrofoam. As you fill that up, it kind of wants to float the styrofoam a little bit. It'll work its way up under the styrofoam. So, them guys are trying to get fill the chimney pad in and get some concrete up on top of the styrofoam before the styrofoam starts floating. And sometimes it's just a pain in the air. You know what? <laughs> All right, now the whole. The chimney pad is kind of filled in, and so it's it, it's harder. Even though we know where it is, it's still harder to know exactly where those edges are sometimes. And you're gonna see the the repercussions of that here right in a minute. Screeding something like this, you know, with the four of us screeding, is actually pretty easy. It's a lot easier than it might look. The key is just not having the high concrete. Well, that's good. Like, you know, it's just a good one. Hey, look, there's a big haunch there. Yeah, funny how it disappears when we fill it in. Look, don't you wish I'd left that bubble on the edge like I wanted to? Well, that's how easy it is to forget where that is once you fill it with concrete. So there's one instance, and you're going to show you another one coming up here a little bit later in the video of another instance where somebody forgets where it is and see if you can guess right now who it is you know is it me is it Darren or is it Eric that forgets where that is uh, and let me know down in the comments before you see it take a guess put that on TikTok what? No, well, you should have had the conversation on there too that was the best part
Now you can kind of see right there a little bit what that little bit of water, those puddles, how that affects the concrete once you just let it sit there for a couple minutes. It, none, of the, none of the mixed water soaks down into the dirt, so it all just kind of floats to the surface. Kind of makes it a pain in the butt, but it will dry up. All right, two trucks down. That figure's right around 11, but we're hoping this 10, we got 10 and a half coming right there. We're hoping he's gonna finish. But no, we'll have to just order the balance. They're about a 20 minute ride, so it's not too far away today. Yeah, we had to wait on that truck for a few minutes, but it finally showed up. We like them right back to back to back, so we'd rather actually have the truck sitting out there waiting than have to, than have to wait for the truck, especially on these thicker floors. It doesn't take very long to dump a 10-yard truck when the floors are this thick. Now back by those pipes you see back there, that's kind of like a utility area, a small bathroom. That's really the only section of the floor that's level or flat. Everything else slopes to the drain. That's teamwork right there. Everybody's moving the concrete rakes in the same motion. Luke's getting awful close to stepping in that hole again. Maybe it's going to be him that does it twice. That went right over his boot. Nope, nope, it was there. <laughs> yeah, so if you get concrete down in your boot like that, you definitely want to go out, empty it out, rinse your skin off. You don't want to leave that concrete inside the boot where it soaks into your sock and then it's rubbing on your skin you're gonna get concrete burns and that concrete burns can get real serious and they take a long time to heal so anytime you get concrete on your skin like that just go clean it off see Eric's out there right now to the right he's cleaning it all off making sure there's there's none down in there So I'm striking that from that last pad I make. That slopes from there. That's the that's the edge of that right bay on the garage. And then over there where those pipes are, like I said, those white pipes, that's the that's the only flat area in the floor. Where are you guys all from that are watching this today? What let, let me know where you're from, what state you're in, what city you're in, what country you're in. Let me know down in the comments. So all in all, this these three trucks, 30, 31 and a half yards, they were each 10 and a half. This took us about an hour to get this poured. That's, that's kind of normal, that's a normal pace for us, not hurrying too much. Just kind of working steady. Um, we, probably if we really want to rush it and hurry it, we could have probably knocked 20 minutes off that pretty easy. But we still would have had to wait for that third truck, no matter how fast we work. They got about 10 trucks they batch out in the morning, you know, and depending on how many we have. Sometimes if it's just two, he'll do them back to back. But if it's more than two, then he might load one for somebody else in between. And then load ours, just so we can get the other guy going too. Usually takes him 10 minutes or so to batch a truck out. Darren's just going to finish that bay off. Yeah, so we did it with that last truck. So 30, he has probably has a little bit left on, but 30 and a half yards did it. I was figuring 31.5, so just a little bit under what I was figuring, but that's a bonus. We don't have to wait for a balance load. 
Now we just gotta wait for the sun to come up, stop curing this up, and we can get it power trialed. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.